Let's say that you have a vehicle and you want to add an aftermarket subwoofer, but you want that subwoofer to be small and compact. You also want the subwoofer to be protected in the rear hatch or trunk area because you're going to use that area for cargo. A great solution for this criteria is a down-firing subwoofer enclosure. By aiming the subwoofer down and spacing it off the floor, the sub is protected. But keep in mind, we want this to be small and we want the subwoofer to play nice and low with plenty of output. Well then, we need to use a high quality shallow mount subwoofer and we should go ported. So in this video, we are going to build just that, a ported down firing subwoofer box. I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's get on in to the build. The first and most important key to getting a good subwoofer enclosure build is to have a good plan. For this project, I'm planning on doing a down firing ported enclosure. Now, for those of you that may be new to subwoofer enclosures, for a ported enclosure, it is critical that we have a precise cross-sectional area for the port and a precise length that correlates with the internal air volume of the enclosure, and this is all calculated in order to get good sound. I know that this can be complex, especially if you're new to car audio. So just so you guys know, a shameless plug here, I do have custom subwoofer enclosure designs for your subwoofer and for your particular vehicle and dimensions. You can purchase them on my website. I'll put a link down in the video description. And you can see on this one, not only do I have the port, I also have some bracing going on. We've got a double baffle going to keep this extremely strong so we won't lose any sound quality to vibrations of the enclosure. And we have 45 degree corners in each corner here to help strengthen the enclosure. I've got my raw pieces of MDF wood here, three quarter inch thick, let's get to cutting. And here it is, fellas. We've got every single board cut that we're going to need for this enclosure, including those 45s. Now, what I always do while I'm going along making all my cuts is I label what each different piece is. This just makes the assembly process a little bit easier and I don't have to double check my drawing. So cutting all of our boards is the first step. We don't wanna start assembly yet because we still need to do some of the detail work. For example, on our baffle boards, we need to cut out the hole for the subwoofer. So I'm going to show you guys that. I also need to do some detail work on the inside of the brace piece. It looks a little something like this. And then on the front and rear piece, you can see I have this cutout here. This gives me kind of like a leg that's kind of a stilt. That way we actually have clearance for the subwoofer to fire downwards. To make a lot of these cuts, you could of course just use a jigsaw. But in my case, I'm going to be using a tool called a router. Now, if you guys are familiar with my channel, a lot of you guys have seen me use a router before along with all the different router bits. But a video that I've been thinking about making is kind of a router overview, a brief explanation of all the different router bits and kind of what they do and what you should use each one for. Drop me a comment and let me know if that's a video that you would like me to make for you. And as always, if you have other ideas for videos, definitely be sure to let me know about those too. Time to start planning out the detail cuts. To get started with this process, I'm marking out the center point for the templates that I'm going to be using to make the cutout holes on this baffle. You'll notice that through this process, whenever I'm using the router, I first rough cut material, leaving about an eighth of an inch in order for that router bit to take it away.
For this project, I'm using a JL Audio 10 TW3 Slim Subwoofer. For being a slim subwoofer, this subwoofer definitely has some serious output. You guys will see what I mean when we do a listening test. Now it's time to make the brace piece for the inside of the enclosure. And for this, I'll be using some scrap wood from a previous project to use as my template. Next up, on the front and back of the enclosure, I need to make these little stilt legs and have this cut out so that the air from the subwoofer can fully move in and out from underneath the enclosure. So now that I have all my detailed cuts made, I need to do some detailed profile work. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna be using some shaping bits on the router. For example, on these braces, we don't want these hard corners on the inside. I actually want to make them nice and smooth and round them over. The same is going to go for the end of the port. We don't want the air that is going back and forth over the edge here to have a hard corner. So in order to smooth out these hard corners, we could of course use sanding, but sanding does take time, so I have a different Different solution. That different solution is to use a roundover bit, and in this case, I'm going to use a 3 8 inch radius roundover. I have several parts to do, let's get these done. Now that I have all these roundovers added, I did forget something here that I need to add in that's important. I need to add a spot for my speaker terminals so that I can actually have a wire and obviously signal going into the box. I'll be using these here, these accept a banana style input, and I have something cool planned for the way I'm going to do this. I'll show you guys how I make that cut in a second, but really quick, I do want to thank our monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts, and show you guys these here. These are the New Concepts basic three-way fuse blocks. I have one set up for a positive lead for the fuses and then I have another setup here because you can use these as a ground distribution block too. These have two inputs that accept up to zero gauge in size and then two outputs that accept up to zero gauge in size and then a four gauge output as well. So three total outputs along with the two inputs. If you wanna learn more about these, check out the link down in the video description. Let's get into making this cut for the speaker terminals. I'm going to start with marking out a center location for the hole cutout that's going to go through the first layer. The speaker terminals aren't quite long enough to go through a single layer of the 3 quarter inch wood, so I'm also going to machine away a little bit of the thickness using this bit. With that done, we're getting really close to being ready to assemble all these pieces. There is one more detailed thing I wanna do. I always like to think about how I'm going to upholster this enclosure and wrap it before I start assembly. And that is because we can do some things to make our wrapping a lot easier to hide the seams. 
In this case, what I'm gonna do, this end piece here and this end piece here, I'm gonna add what's called a rabbited groove around the outside edge. This is what a rabbit bit looks like. It basically cuts a notch into our piece. Let me cut a notch really quick and then it'll make more sense why I'm doing this. What this notch is going to do once it's butted up against the other pieces of the enclosure is it's going to leave a little U-shaped channel and that will allow me to tuck the edge of the carpet from this part into that and then the carpet that's on here will also tuck into that same channel and it will give me a nice transition gap to cut the different pieces of carpet and have them fit together. This will make more sense later. Let's get into assembling this. Notice here that I'm holding one of the other pieces against the edge of the box when I line up this piece that I'm brad nailing in. This is a good little trick to get everything nice and square. For the braces, I'm using CA glue instead of wood glue, and that's because I don't have any brad nails that are short enough to hold the braces in place while the wood glue dries. The CA glue will dry instantly and hold these in place. So here's what it looks like inside the enclosure once the subwoofer is mounted. You can see that this bracing is nice and close to the subwoofer. That way we're not gonna have any panel flex in this panel here because the subwoofer is going to be moving quite a bit. We don't wanna be losing any acoustic energy to that vibration. It also helps that this is double baffled anyhow. You can also now get an idea what this groove looks like that I made with a rabbiting bit earlier. This is gonna work really nice for tucking the carpet in. Got the 45s mounted in the corners, got our port rounded over here. I haven't rounded over this corner yet intentionally. I'm gonna wait till I put the top of the subwoofer enclosure on and then run a round over bit around this inside hole. Now these holes here are of course the holes for the wiring. I'm gonna get that wiring ran while I still have access inside the enclosure because I like to secure the wiring using these things. It helps to prevent the wiring from bouncing around. Let me show you what I mean. Now that the wiring is done, this gives you guys a better idea of what I was talking about. Have my wiring terminals attached there. The wiring goes through here. This is wrapped in closed cell foam and it's also secured. That way I don't have to worry about this potentially vibrating against the wood and making a weird noise. And even if it does, it's isolated with that closed cell foam. So now all I need to do is I just need to attach this top board here. Once I do attach that top board, it's going to look a little something like this finished. And like I said before, I do need to still round over this, but I'm holding off on attaching the top board for an important reason. On top of the enclosure here, I want to kind of make the box look like, well, more than just a box. So I'm going to do some cool insert work and I'm also thinking about using this really neat kind of gray stained wood look material on the inside as an insert. Let me know what you guys think, if that'd be kind of cool to see. Now in the next video, we're going to be doing the detail work, we're going to be doing the upholstery, and we have to do a listening test to hear how this thing sounds. To catch that future video along with other car audio lessons and build logs, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Just so you know, I also post sneak peek pictures over on my Instagram page, at Car Audio Fab. To learn more about the basic three-way fuse block from our show sponsor, New Concepts, be sure to check out the link down in the video description. A special thanks to Lani, Ali, William, Marco, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team, and thank you guys for watching.